With all the chaos that has been going on in the media about Haiti, I wanted to bless you guys with some positive media and the rich culture of Haiti. The name Claudinette Fouchat is a very popular one. Claudinette Fouchat was Haiti's very own sugar queen. In 1960, Haiti was surrounded by photographers and journalists. The reason was that the small Caribbean Republic had been the birthplace of the sugar queen, a title given to Claudinette, the first Haitian woman to compete in the Miss Universe, who also became Miss Haiti. She was so popular in her day that her face was found on stamps and in magazines globally. She even graced the covers of Jet and Ebony magazines a few times. A wealthy socialite, she showed the world that Haiti has a touch of glamour and elegance and class. We're going to get into her story and why it's necessary, especially for today with all that's been going on. But first, hey friend, welcome to my channel, Crane Allude, where we deep dive and break down the most iconic stars through history. If you're not yet subscribed, please be sure to do so and if you're already subscribed please turn on your notification bell so you never miss an upload now without further ado let's get into this video so claudine fouchard born in port-au-prince on february 3rd 1938 claudine did not come from humble beginnings though she herself was a very humble woman Reared in luxury, Claudinette is the daughter of Jean Fouchard, a sugar plantation and rum distillery tycoon who served his country as a diplomat, first as the Haitian ambassador to Cuba, then as envoy to France. For 12 years, he was a cabinet minister and is widely known and respected. She grew up between Paris and Havana and upon entering her academic career, was willing to become a physicist and serve the people of her country. Dancing merengue to music played by small combo on the Fusha plantation was her favorite pastime with her father growing up. She also enjoyed shopping. She also loved to play on the beach. But the passion for art spoke loudly in the heart of the promising young woman. And Claudinette graduated in music from Georgetown University in Washington, D.C. and in fine arts from the Arbonne in Paris. In addition to French and Creole, her native languages, Fusha was fluent in English, German, Spanish, and Italian. From the age of 17, Claudinette participated in local beauty contests and became known as the Sugar Queen when she defeated 42 candidates in the international beauty competition held in Cali, Colombia. But it was when she received the title of Miss Haiti that the beauty with voluptuous curves achieved national celebrity status. Fast fame came to Claudinette. She was proclaimed the most beautiful female of her island country because of her poise, personality, and good looks. She was a voluptuously built peach brown beauty with a stunning 36-24-36 figure and a winning dimpled smile, a striking example of the beauty with brains formula. She had a sparkling mind sharpened by travel from international education acquired in France, Italy, Germany, and the U.S. She always dressed very elegantly with the finest clothes and kept her hair maintained. Not one strand would be found out of place. With a soft demeanor, she was described as soft-spoken and very private. But unlike most contestants who expected to participate in the annual spectacular, she was totally unconcerned about her prospects of winning. None of the fame her victories brought her made an impression on the sensitive Claudinette. A member of one of Haiti's richest and most distinguished families, Claudinette was a strong-willed, well-reared woman who took an earnest interest in her country's many social problems and devoted much of her time to volunteer social service work. Claudinette at first believed she had no chance of winning Miss Universe, which would take place in Miami and would award the winner among other honors, a cash prize worth $10,000. In fact, crowns, scepters, titles, and fame did not seduce the 21-year-old girl who was more concerned with dedicating herself to a simple life and marrying her then fiance, the German industrialist Walter Fisch. An American journalist had to convince her otherwise by reminding her, you owe it to your country. Claudinette lost the Miss Universe title to the American Linda Bemet. Her participation in the contest, however, revived Haiti's morale as a country of beauty. The Queen of Sugar had her image printed on postage stamps, was immortalized in songs, and awarded the Order of Merit by the then Haitian president, Francois Duvalier. Why did Haiti make such a big deal about her if she lost? 
Well, if you watch my video on the Duvaliers, which I will pin in the comment for you, then you know the West and European powers did not like Haiti during that era. Well, it seems they still don't like Haiti. Haiti was demonized a lot in the media because they successfully obtained their freedom from such a huge European superpower like France. So the whole world was against Haiti. The media portrayal refused to show the true beauty of Haiti. Know Your Caribbean on Instagram summed it up real nice, stating, and I quote, during the late 1700s, Haiti was the richest colony in the world, making more money than the entire Spanish empire. When the USA was battling against the English during their revolution, France, after making their wealth off of Haiti, gave $9 billion to the USA in assistance. This money was instrumental in winning the war. Without Haitian money, there would have been no USA independence. When the Haitian Revolution happened, Napoleon, losing the world's richest colony to formerly enslaved Africans, was desperate for money. With this loss and his desperation to fund his conquest in Europe, he sold 530 million acres of land to America for money. These acres of land makes up what we know as the states of Louisiana, Arkansas, Oklahoma, Kansas, Missouri, Iowa, Nebraska, Colorado, South Dakota, Minnesota, Wyoming, North Dakota, and Montana. Without the Haitian Revolution, these areas would have stayed belonging to France, so America would have never gotten them. Haiti sent over 500 men of color to fight for the American Patriot cause in Savannah, Georgia, including children as young as 12. One of these children was the future leader of Haiti, Ali Christophe. France used Haiti as a transient point to send military aid to America during its Revolutionary War in support of the American Patriot cause. The gunpowder used in the famous U.S. Battle of Saratoga came from Haiti. During the heights of the American Civil War and the fight to keep slavery alive in the USA, Haiti offered free passage, land, and citizenship to African Americans who could make it to the ships leaving for Haiti and New Orleans. And after the Haitian Revolution, France forced Haiti to pay them $21 billion in today's money for their freedom from enslavement. Over the decades, the USA became an appointed debt collector for France, accruing millions in fees. The USA took control over Haiti's gold Gold reserve, they seized control of Haiti's custom houses, administrative in institutions, banks, and the national treasury, with the United States using a total of 40% of Haiti's national income to repay debts to American and French banks for 20 years. There would be no American independence without Haiti. Mention Haiti, and this is what you'll likely hear. From poverty, natural disaster, and now political violence. Every report about Haiti has to include the line that it's the poorest country in the Western Hemisphere. But hold on for a second. Something's missing in this conversation right? How did the rest of the world get so rich? Let's start with France. Imagine if you were enslaved, and after fighting for your independence, you were forced to spend the next couple of generations paying compensation to those who colonized you. This is punishment uh, for their unwillingness to remain under the yoke of slavery. That is exactly what happened to Haiti. In 1697, France and Spain ended a war with each other by dividing up the Spanish colony Hispaniola. Through the labor of enslaved indigenous and black people, Saint-Domingue became the world's most profitable colony, exporting sugar, coffee, and indigo. Self-liberated Africans led the Haitian Revolution and ended slavery in present-day Haiti and the Dominican Republic. After 12 years of fighting the French colonial power, which had tried to reintroduce slavery, the formerly enslaved people of Saint-Domingue officially declared their independence and renamed their country Haiti. And France refused to accept Haiti's independence unless Haiti paid 150 million franc as so-called compensation for lost revenues from slavery. That was around 10 times Haiti's annual budget. Many countries, including the United States, refused to recognize Haitian independence in fear of slave rebellion. Articles from that period show that the French king knew the Haitian government wouldn't be able to repay the debt which decimated Haiti's economy. Haitians had extremely high taxes, and most of the tax revenue was paid for the indemnity. This left the education system, public infrastructures, and healthcare underdeveloped. It took Haiti 122 years to pay off its debt and required taking high interest loans, but it's not just the French who have played a role in Haiti's misery. So the United States has intervened in Haitian affairs quite a lot. President Moïse's assassination in 2021 left some Haitian officials calling for U.S. intervention, but not everyone agreed. There's a lot of people saying, no, we don't want the United States to come and intervene again because this is, again, a repetition of history. The history that Professor Doubt is talking about involves the United States' 19-year occupation of Haiti, an occupation that killed thousands of Haitians. Following the assassination of Haiti's president in 1915, U.S. President Woodrow Wilson's administration invaded Haiti to protect U.S. investments. Then, they forced the election of a new Haitian president who would protect American interests in the country. Racist and fear-mongering rhetoric was used to justify the move. The occupation ensured that the U.S. prioritized its own interests in Haiti over what was best for Haitians. 
The U.S. occupation ended in 1934, after local dissent and rebellion grew too costly for the U.S. to control. But even after the occupation, the United States continued to play a role in the internal affairs of Haiti. In 1957, the U.S. government threw its support behind a Haitian dictator, François Duvalier. Duvalier and his successor, aka his son Jean-Claude, ate up aid from the United States in exchange for their strong anti-communist stand at the height of the Cold War. Haitian uprisings ended Duvalier Jr.'s rule and led to Haiti choosing its democratically elected leader, jean bertrand Aristide, in 1990. But within a year, Aristide's government was toppled by a coup. Not only was one of the leaders of the coup on the CIA's payroll, but the U.S. had set up and funded the Haitian military and National Intelligence Service, which both played key roles in the coup. Ousted Aristide returned to his second presidency in 2001, and again was forced out of office by a coup that he claimed the U.S. had orchestrated. And after that, President Obama's cabinet pressured a Haitian presidential candidate to withdraw in 2010. And that brought us to the 2016 Haitian presidential election, where late President Moïse was elected with an extremely low voter turnout, but U.S. backing. In February 2021, Moïse refused to step down at the end of his term. The U.S. once again backed him while thousands of Haitian protesters took to the street. Many Haitians are saying, we want to try actual Haitian democracy where the Haitian people, not just the elite and the bourgeoisie and the business interests, get to have a say and determine the direction and future of the country. It's clear that Haiti's poverty and political instability has long been influenced and shaped by foreign players. So knowing this, where does Haiti go from here? So because of all of this, Haiti has been public enemy number one, portrayed in the media in the worst light, showing only poverty and depravity, which is the cause of the very West who inflicts it. May I add, if I may, that Haitians are the cleanest people when it comes to their food. We clean our meats with vinegar, limes, and sour oranges, and do not eat cats nor dogs. It's silly that I have to even say that. I live in Florida, where they eat gators, snakes, roadkills, raccoons, and more, which is considered an abomination in Haiti. These foods are considered unclean, yet it's a delicacy in the South. In Springfield, they're eating the dogs, the people that came in. They're eating the cats. They're eating, they're eating the pets of the people that live there. There are other conversations that are happening, like Aiden Clark, 11-year-old boy who was in Springfield last year. It was a car accident involving a Haitian immigrant. Um, you said that he was murdered. His father said that's not true. It was an accident. Here's what he said to you. J.D. Vance and Donald Trump, they have spoken my son's name and used his death for political gain. This needs to stop now. They are not allowed, nor have they ever been allowed to mention Aiden Clark from Springfield, Ohio. Senator, he's asking for you to apologize. Will you? Dana, first of all, my heart goes out to the Clark family, and I'm still going to keep on talking about what the migrants have done to Springfield, Ohio, and what Kamala Harris's open border has done to Springfield, Ohio. Haitians are eating dogs and cats. Can you affirmatively say now that that is a rumor that has no base basis with evidence. I've been trying to talk about the problems in Springfield for months and the American media ignored it. The American media totally ignored this stuff until Donald Trump and I started talking about cat memes. But it if wasn't I just have a to meme, create right? stories so that the American media actually pays attention to the suffering of the American people, then that's what I'm going to do, Dan. But it if wasn't I just a to meme. create stories. And they've only found two Springfield residents calling to complain about Haitian nigger, uh, migrants taking geese from pots to complain about Haitian nigger migrants. Um, Migrants. Now people are sharing this video that appears to show police body camera footage of a woman being arrested for eating a cat as proof that the Haitian immigrants are actually doing this. Video does show a woman in Ohio being arrested for and eating a cat. But the woman in the video isn't a Haitian immigrant. The woman in the video is Alexis Farrell, a 27-year-old woman from Canton, Ohio. These reports show Farrell was arrested in Canton on August 16th, 2024 and charged with prohibitions concerning a companion animal, cruelty to animals, and disorderly conduct. Voting records confirm Pharrell is a U.S. citizen. This video doesn't show a Haitian immigrant in Springfield being arrested for eating a cat. This week, all kinds of people sent us this picture, claiming it shows evidence of Haitian migrants catching and eating geese in Springfield. We've uncovered the picture was actually taken in Columbus on July 28th, and we pulled this street view from a mapping system to show you exactly where it was taken. Ask yourselves, why is this random narrative in 2024 allowed? Why is anyone of color participating in these jokes, especially African Americans? Your leaders like MLK, Malcolm X, and even Nat Turner was inspired by and invigorated by what Haitians did in 1804. Haiti helped many countries gain independence in the early 19th century, so you guys should be standing with us too. These countries include Venezuela, and may I add, Venezuelans always do right by Haitians, so... 
Shout out to my Venezuelans. I love y'all. <laughs> if you're Venezuelan, you could put your flag there because even in their flag, they honored Haiti for helping them with that. But these other countries that Haiti helped gain their independence was Ecuador, Colombia, Panama, Northern Peru, Costa Rica, Nicaragua, and Bolivia. Haiti supported Simon Bolivar, who led these countries to independence from Spain. President Pétion agreed to help on the condition that Bolivar would free all slaves when the countries became independent. Haiti also supported Greece and Jamaica. Haiti's own independence from France in 1804 inspired other revolts in the Caribbean and in the Americas. A lot of Americans like Nat Turner and so many that revolted was because of Haiti. Haiti also supported Jewish refugees during World War II by issuing visas and some of these refugees remained in Haiti till this day. They're considered because they mixed also with some of the Haitians so they're considered the mulats or the mulattoes in Haiti also and they still live there. Where is the world when it's time to stand with us when Haiti has always stand with the world? And they stood for freedom and all the powers that be because they all work together. And the sooner you guys realize this, the better off we'll be as a society that all of the West and European powers work together. They're all under the same umbrella. That is just the truth. This is why in 1958 and 1960, Claudinette was such a big deal. It was like the West and European media was finally giving Haiti a win, even if it was a small one. Yeah, but Corrine, she didn't win. Yeah, I know, but she was the first Haitian woman to participate as Miss Universe, which was still a win for Haiti. Haiti was considered in the topic of beauty or universe and pageantry because, you know, they portrayed Haitian women as ugly. <laughs> I don't know why. She won the Sugar Queen title in Colombia also, which was also a win. Before leaving for Colombia, Claudinette Fouchard told the Port-au-Prince based Le Nouvelis that by competing, she believed her role as Miss Haiti was to work towards making our little country better known and admired in the world, end quote. That was the whole point. She just wanted to, hey, bring that honor back to our world. The stakes for the Sugar Queen pageant were high as tourism to Haiti, its hotel industry, and its international image were put on stage alongside Claudinette Fouchard. Those in attendance were the big wigs, the one that controlled, the one that controlled politics in every country, <laughs> like the Rockefellers, Ernest Hemingway, and businessmen from across the globe were present for this contest, and she was part of it. Fusha, well aware of the meaning of her performance, told reporters, I will do my best to represent my country and my race. And she did, in fact, do her best. It brought so much pride to Haiti. In September of the same year, Claudinette and Fischl, her husband, were married in an outdoor ceremony, which took place at the Fusha family's residence in Pétionville, Haiti. And since then, Fusha has remained distant from public life. It is known that throughout her life she was involved in humanitarian causes and the fight for the civil rights of the black population and because of her story Claudinette Fouchard is part of Haiti's national memory and she's still so private you will not find any information about her. She did leave Haiti eventually to go to Germany where her husband is from but still would come back to Haiti often fighting for the causes etc. It just remained low key and there's not even information on whether she's still alive or not but she is still part of a history of pride she was on stamps uh, it was just amazing how she brought pride because it was so normal like women that look like her were everywhere in Haiti it's still everywhere in Haiti and you know she's a gorgeous woman but there's even more beautiful women from that era as you see I'm showing you pictures of Haitians throughout that era that was Haiti but the media just refused to showcase that and they would look for the worst parts of Haiti the worst part like this that's what they'll put in the media because just like in American cinema in Hollywood, they wanted to portray black women as mammies and, you know, without the desirability cloak. They wanted to do that to the nation that fought and got their independence because how dare you? How dare you get your independence? And now you're going to be the cause that all of the blacks will feel like we too can revolt. We too can uh, have um, slavery be abolished in our countries because the Haitians did it as small as they were they did it mm. but this is all i have for this video please check out my baby dog video and i did one for papa dog also the duvaliers <laughs> this is very interesting if you like this video you definitely will love that one i will see you guys in the next video until next time 